Hello and welcome back to the channel. It's Mark from PowerSonic and Apprentice One to One. You will see behind me here another Sige Energy inverter. This one's a little bit of a tweak again on some other variations on the YouTube channel. We're wall mounting it and it's tying in with existing solar PV on a new build. We're in a garaged area. There's some sort of considerations around that that we're going to get to in the course of this video. But just to stay right at the start, if you're a consumer watching this and you are interested in battery storage, solar PV or an electric charge point at your home, please do get in touch with us. There's a link in the description where you can go off to our website, provide some details, and we'll do our very best to give you an outline proposal from just that, and hopefully bring renewable power to your home. But without any further ado, we're going to dive into this and get on with it. I'll show you what we've got and how we came to put it there, and we'll take a little look through the system when it's finished. So we are fortunate to be in a new build property within the garage and we have got lots of what we need already in place such as our earth in smoke and heat detection and the guys are just setting out the brackets to carry the weight of these batteries making sure we get them plumb and on the money. You can see here it's just a case of stacking them up they then screw together and while they were doing it I was keeping myself busy in the background as always. So I don't think we've done a video of an wall mounted bracket for the side energy system this is the eight kilowatt hour module and we've got the 10 kilowatt inverter on top i think i'll double check that um, you can put i believe two of the batteries on the wall mounting kits before you need another one just to show you how they fix there's a couple on each side of the kind of expandable bolts so you need to make sure your wall type is suitable for that this is um, an external garage wall so it's a substantial uh, engineering block so it's nice and strong and we're happy with that in this case but you do have to watch some of the blocks Senkos are especially soft and those kind of fixings the expansion kind of just crumbles the block and you end up with not that strong a fixing so you need to make sure you're careful with that and then on the side of the inverters you've got these brackets which also secure into the wall and you've got your link-in brackets that kind of tie it all together as well I was always with these, there's the side covers that go on that make this look really nice and neat. Uh, once we get these covered, I'll show you when it's finished again, but these are absolutely beautiful. They're among the best looking products on the market. And you can see with this nice long white wall here, it just blends in beautifully. Uh, the reason we've gone off the ground is the customer's worried about um, flooding in the local area. There's never been a flood in amongst the property, but it's a relative new build and the um, city as a whole does have a history of that. So they've just been a bit cautious and asked us to mount it up. Uh, and if that was ever to happen, at least it's protected. It's also out the way of um, kind of bikes and lawnmowers and stuff coming in and out. So it makes sense. Uh, we've got our usual MPPT inputs on these. So there's four on the side here. So the MPPTs, for those of you who don't know when we're talking about these, the ones with the blue caps on, basically each string of solar panels has a positive and a negative. They attach into these, there's an MPPT which controls the voltage coming out of the solar panels to be best used by the inverter and this side energy system has four in this flavour of inverter. I think the smaller ones at 8 kilowatt have three and six and under have two, um, which is different to the Give Energy ecosystem which has two of the MPPTs on their 8 and 10, 10 kilowatt inverters. So we've got our DC switch here Again, we always like to rely on one of our own. And we've got all of the RJ45 connection points. We've got our main um, power plug, which goes in here. And then we have got the comms plug. So if you've not got a gateway, we do on this one. Um, you can use your comms plug, which should link into your CT and metering and be able to kind of let the inverter know what's going on in the wider installation. But because we've got the gateway, that just comes off the RJ45 link. Um, over to the gateway into part one. And we'll show you that. The gateway is going just the other side of this wall. X marks the spot. So just in there is under the stairs. And this is a typical new build where we've got a switch fuse that feeds off via a steel wire armour to a reasonable consumer unit looking at it from the outside. We're going to position the gateway in there. There's existing PV on this one. And we're going to be using the smart part to take that PV input into the side energy system so it can see it and monitor it um, and it will display in the app as solar generation so that's why we've opted for the gateway in there it's just closer to all of the things it needs to connect to essentially it's closer for the main tails 
the link back to the distribution board consumer unit and also to integrate the PV. If we was to bring it through and position it here, you've got all those extra runs of cable to and fro, and this just eliminates that. It also puts it in amongst all of the other switch gear, so it's all in one place. If the customer's ever having work done or needs to do something, they're not going to two different points of isolation. When you can set up like that, it makes, it makes a lot of sense. And we've done these both ways around. We've shown on the channel before where we've put a gateway into a garage location, taking a sub main from the main intake area just because there's no space to house the gateway near it. That's just the nature of the beast. We've got the luxury of choice here, and this is what we've opted for. So there'll be some trunking. Once we've punched through and seen exactly where we end up, we'll pop a length of trunking across. We can sit our isolator on it, and I'll show you all that when we get to that stage. I did say I'd check the rating of this inverter. We've not got my glasses on. It is a 10 kilowatt one. So that's it sat on that bracket, nice and secured onto the wall. Uh, you can see the guys have been able to get the vehicle right up into this garage. It's been handy because it was raining this morning. So all the stuff comes straight out. The boxes on these we've shown before, there's quite a lot of packaging with the Sarge Energy system, which is great because it protects it in transit, but then there's obviously getting rid of it afterwards. There's a lot of polystyrene, a lot of cardboard. So I'm just separating all of that for recycling and otherwise while the guys are on with doing their job under the stairs, which I'll take you in and show you later on. So this is the cupboard and it is under the stairs. It's a bit of a plant room. We've got the underfloor heating um, stuff, alarm and whatnot. And there is existing solar PV on this one. Not very much of it, but there is some existing. The inverter's up in the loft and it's all wired back to this Eaton twin stack um, consumer unit. Now it is, RCDs, they are type AC, and you can see the solar, you can find where the solar is actually powered from actually, uh, it's off this breaker here. So this one is the solar circuit, and obviously we've got the type AC RCD aspect, and we need to tie this into the side in store. So we're going to be able to take the solar um, power and basically run it from our gateway. So the other side of the wall, as you'll have seen already, we've got the other end of these two holes here. So we're bringing through the cat cable, which links the gateway and the SIGIN star. We also need to take another cat cable through from the router to the SIGIN star, so it's got data. And then we've obviously got our power going to the SIGIN star from the gateway. And then we've got the gateway linking up with the consumer unit. So you can see there we've got the gateway mounted. Pop the door shut, get a better wide angle view on it. This length of trunking, which we've slotted here so we can bring our cables up the back out of sight and then up and into the consumer unit. You see we've taken a slice out of the trunking here and there's a knockout for the tails there. So the idea is we're gonna put a main switch next to the existing main switch so we've got the main grid feed coming here presently. We're gonna come off the bottom of this main switch to our gateway, which is gonna be the grid input. We're then gonna return the backup part or kind of consumer units um, load into another main switch, which we'll put adjacent to this. All this will shuffle up two spaces. And basically the idea was we've got an isolation point for the grid that first enters into this consumer unit where you'd expect to find it. And then we've got another isolation point for the actual power of all the loads can get a bit confusing but if we were to just use the 100 amp connector blocks as we have in the past you can end up with a grid just passing through this enclosure with no way of being able to kind of turn it off from doing so so that seemed like a better way of doing it there's no way of getting to this steel wire armor submarine and moving it anywhere else so that is kind of where we are we certainly couldn't run another one um, through the new build house back from the switch fuse so i think that's a good solution but let us know in the comments if you'd approach approach that differently Obviously the PV side of things, the inverter doesn't need RCD protection on it. The cable installation method doesn't need RCD protection on it. So we can just pop that into the, um, the backup part. We just need to account for our uh, appropriate circuit protection for that. So we're gonna run that, um, sorry, through the smart part. We're gonna run that back in so we can pick up the, the solar PV, but obviously we'll need to put an appropriately sized overcurrent protective device in place for it and we'll show you how we get to that when we do it it's hard it's hard to explain it but it'll be easy to show you when we've done it so we will do that but if i just get you down here you can see our cables are going to come in the bottom on here and we're just going to loop straight up the back so they're all nice and neat and out the way 
obviously once we get them clipped into position so that's one of the uh, cat cables presently we'll have the tails in and out as well and then nothing's kind of on show in here you know, they, they might start shoes or a hoover in there you don't want cables that are going to get snagged so we're going to get those out the way and then the main tails the grid in will take its feed from what i showed you up there and then obviously the power will return to the consumer unit the sig and star will come off one of the inverter ports if i can squeeze in behind the door so you can see we've got this one here we'll come off there that'll power the sig and star and then the smart port will power the existing solar and you can see that's 125 amps that's what i'm on about we need to kind of have a a bit of a lower sorry it's 100 amp bit of a lower um value on the overcurrent protected device for that circuit so we've got to put something else um, in line with that and then obviously we've got our spd down here we've got our two other inverter parts for if we were to add in more side installs and we've got our 125 amp um, running off to the consumer units now obviously that's all limited by the switch views um, on the grid side of things but when you are blending the gateway you do need to think that yeah we've got 63 amps that can come in from the grid but we've also got that 10 kilowatts that can come for our side install so we still could have a 100 amp consume consumption by the consumer unit so we need to size our tails accordingly from that backup part up into there sometimes you can just get into the mindset of well the grid's got a 63 amp supply on this one so the backup part only needs 16 mil cable for want of a better example but you do need to remember that your side and store can also input power as well which can be drawn by the house load. your max demand would say that's not going to happen but theoretically it could so it's worth bearing in mind and then again because you're in trunking there's other considerations as well um, but always around i think we're covered on this one and um, we'll show you it when we've got it buttoned up. But that's where we are for now. We'll go and have a look at the switch views and then we'll come back to this once it's all wired because I think it'll make a bit more sense when we're at that stage. So this is just in a cupboard and to the side of the front door. We have got a pretty switch views in here. This isn't one we fitted. You can see in there, there is a 63 amp fuse. Once we've got the um, power off, I'll show you that. But they have actually landed in the steel wire armor submain, which is nice to see. Usually they're just left kind of rammed in here and there's been a bit of an effort on the um, coupling in of the tails as well. So kudos to the new builders on that. It's much better than we usually find. Um, so yeah, that's that one. And if I remember, I'll show you the fuse when we've got that off. But the submain down to that, con that consumer unit is, I believe, a 25 mil three car. But again, we'll have to see that once we open it up. I'm just going by eye off the size of this cable because we can't see any markings on it. It's not long enough and I'm not opened up any of the internals as yet. So we'll cover that off when we get to it. But I just thought I'd show you that. Other people um, putting the Proteus switch fuses in the meter cabinets. And look at that. Like it was made to fit. All this fuss over space. It's an absolute nonsense. We just need to collaborate and uh, share that space effectively for consumers. There's no need for meter tails isolators before our isolators and other bits and pieces just to switch fuse. I mean, come on, it's just so easy. Just, just do that and then it's all taken care of. Um, any renewable technologies can be added on outside of that and it just solves a problem that doesn't need to exist. So that is the Sage Energy Inverter online and commissioned. We've got our local AC isolation point down there and that is covering off maintenance for the inverter if someone needs to turn it off and shut it down. We've got our trunking all on now. Matthew's just popping the lid in the end to nicely finish that. And we've popped a heat detector up near the battery system as well that is linked to the house alarms. Obviously this is a garage area and somebody could still bring a vehicle in so we aren't able to put a traditional smoke alarm but that is as close to there as we could get it. The thinking being if it enters a problem that's going to see it really quickly and sound the alarms in the house as well. Obviously because it is a garage this space is um, fire rated and sealed and we've got the um, fire rated plasterboard on the ceiling we've got the blocks all around i'm not going to spin you around and show you because there's the customer stuff in here um, but that is now our eight kilowatt battery on the wall with the 10 kilowatt inverter on top of it we've tied in the existing solar pv through the smart part on the gateway as i've shown you 
and the generation from that will be visible to the customer in the app and they can also make use of that generation to fill the battery up if there is any beyond house loads consumption and then equally in return with that they can charge this up overnight on a low cost tariff then run the house through the day and also any of that solar generation that's reached the battery um, during the course of the day they can use on an evening and when the worst happens and the grid goes down this gives back up to the home with that 10 kilowatt rated inverter you can cover off most of your house loads obviously you need to set an element of reserve for that in the system because sod's law will dictate when it happens you've got about two percent sock in the battery so that's a decision for you to make as a consumer of how much of a reserve you want when that worst case time happens is it 10 percent 30 percent i guess it depends on the size of your battery storage system and with this being eight kilowatt hours you know if you're reserving 30 percent of it that's quite a lot of your available capacity especially if you don't get a lot of power cuts so we can pop back inside and have a look at the gateway now it is finished you can see we've got the trunking in with the cables we discussed earlier going between the sergeant star gateway up to that eaton consumer unit we've still got the end caps to pop in on that length of trunking and just smarten it up a touch but that is it done on and working cables punched through nice and neatly fire sealed through that wall as well if we look in the Eaton board, you can see where we've popped that main switch on. Matt is still to label this up, so that will be getting done. But that is basically to be able to isolate the steel wire armor that was there before the power's returned to the other main switch, which powers the Eaton board. We've moved the solar circuit protected device down to the bottom of the board and just popped in the feed from the smart port to that and then used it to protect the cabling up to the inverter on the existing PV array. So we've not had to touch any of the metering or isolation points on that. So you can see with the grid port, which has the feed coming in now from that consumer unit and then the smart port takes power off to the solar system. We've got our SPD, we've got the backup port there on covering the consumption within the property and the smart port there tied up with the solar system. So that will now recognize the existing solar PV as generation and display it as such in the Sargent Store app, which is the game changing feature of this, in my opinion. You're able to recognize other inverters outside of your ecosystem as generation. And that is really useful for customers adopting this um, into existing renewable setups. So you can see here, we've still got the same isolators and metering. None of that has changed. We've not interfered with the original installer's setup, which seems to be quite good. And we've got all of our data connections, everything in place. And um, I think that came up pretty nice in there. So this is new build. The smoke detection is A1 and we have got appropriate heat detection in place. Ours is an addition to that and it's interlinked to that existing system just as sort of a belt and braces approach to reassure the customer. You can see Matt eating up the trunk in there for a lovely finish and what is a cracking so job. This is done. Thanks for watching this particular video. Again, just slightly different on some of the other Sage Energy System installs we've shared on the channel. And to repeat the message at the start of the video, again, if you're interested in one of these for your home or business, please do get in touch. There's a link in the description to go off and do so. If anyone's got any questions around the wider install, as always, fire them into the comments and I'll do my best to answer those. Otherwise, just thank you very much for watching and hopefully we'll see you on the next one.